This is part three out of three. If you want to see more of these things, leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd like me to talk about. And I'll make sure to make it happen for you. But only for you. Click the subscribe button and enable the notification with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. So we've gone through the basic retouching, then we've done the advanced retouching, and now we end up with a photo which is like this. Uh, this photo is basically, you know, the face is cleaned up. And one thing I want you to notice though is that look how the details are preserved and yet the blemishes are gone. That's thanks to the frequency separation technique. Uh, with that said, uh, we've done uh, frequency separation, we've done dodge and burn. Uh, now it's the creative part, the creative stage of the workflow. And this is the last step. So here I already pre-made something and uh, you know, I was, it was just me experimenting. Now here I've made a mask and the mask is concealing the model revealing the background. What I've done is darken up the background and then you can see the difference here. And then I'm in, adding a kind of vignette. So this is like brighten up in a normal shape. So we have this vignette effect. Um, and here we've done something else. So what I've done here is I selected the model this time. So the model is revealed and the background is concealed. And I have with the curve layer, with a curve layer put on screen. Screen is blending mode, which is enhancing the highlights. I have bumped up the highlights of the mode. As you can see, the opacity 50%, and you can see the effect of this layer. It's just bumping up a little bit the highlights. Now, I've done the same with the shadows. This time, the multiply is the way to go. And this is darken it up. At least the dark part of the image. And then I have adjusted the contrast just a touch. Now the way I do contrast, the way I like to do contrast is this. I add a black and white layer, then I switch to overlay, and then I'm adjusting the opacity like something usually between 10 and 30 percent. It depends on the um, now, the final step is, once this is done, um, I have basically saved this as a smart object, which is right here. I've added some smart sharpen, just to sharp, sharpen up the image a little bit. And then I added a camera raw filter. So basically I go into filter, camera raw filter, and this is to add grain and vignette. And uh, Photoshop is doing its things. It will be done in a second. More, okay. I go into effects. And then, now, usually I zoom in 100%. I go in an area where I can see highlight and shadows. And then I bump up the gray because I want to see what's happening. I want to see how fine is the gray. And I will adjust the size of the gray according to what I want to see there. The roughness of the grain and then back to zero I'm just bumping it up just a touch at a time until I see something that I like. Now the reason why I add grain um, you know many times people struggle so much to remove noise and then you might ask why you're adding a grain it's because it gives to the picture, and this is personal taste. Uh, in fact, this is in the creative step. Uh, because to me, a picture with some grain, it resembles a little bit uh, a printed picture. So there is some texture from, from paper. Again, personal taste, you don't need to do it if you don't like it. Uh, I like it, so I do it. So, and after I've done that, I also add some post crop vignette. Now usually I don't push it too much because the lenses I use they already provide some vignetting effect. I believe minus 3% is good for this picture. And uh, there you have it. That's a picture that made up a cover of a fashion magazine. 
If you like this video, hit the subscribe button down below and leave a comment down to let me know what you would like me to talk about. See you next time.